Supreme Master Ching Ai's lectures are not a complete meditation instruction. Please do not try alone. For free of charge guidance, please visit www.godsdirectcontact.org or contact any of our centers near you. Episod hari ini akan dipersembahkan dalam bahasa Inggeris dengan sari kata bahasa Arab Aura juga dikenali sebagai Vietnam, Bukaria, China, Croatia, Inggeris, Perancis, Jerman, Hindi, Hungary, Indonesia, Jepun, Korea, Melayu, Mongolia, Malaysia. Poland, Portugis, Panjab, Romania, Spanyol dan Thai. Halo, penonton-penonton yang atristik salam mesra. Saya Pantung dari Johor Bahru di Malaysia yang kaya dengan keindahan dan sumber semula jari. Malaysia memang sebuah negara indah yang dikuniai dengan berbagai bukit dan gunung yang ditumbuhi hutan tebal. Bantangan pantai yang dipinggiri pokok pama dengan laut yang kehijau-hijauan, cahaya matahari keemasan serta lakun air tawar. Tarikan utama Malaysia ialah kontrasnya yang besar, iaitu dari penjaka langit yang bercua tinggi dapat dilihat rumah papan yang dibina di atas kaki bancak. Budaya majemuk keajaiban alam semula jari, bandar raya besar dan banyak pulau yang indah pemai, semuanya sebahagian dari para negara yang indah ini. Keruakaman budayanya juga telah menjadikan Malaysia Tuan Rumah dari berbagai aneka festival. Warisan multi budaya dan multi race Malaysia diperlihatkan secara menyuruk melalui kerakaman bentuk muzik dan tariannya. Kami berbesar hati untuk memperkenalkan kepada anda keindahan Malaysia. Rakyat kami mengucapkan semoga anda dijulai kemuliaan dan bekas suka. Hari ini kami berkongsi dengan anda bahagian ketika episod kisah Buddha seorang Brahmin dan tiada api seperti nafsu. Selama tiga dekad, Maha Guru Ching Hai menerangi dunia kita dengan ajaran sutinya sebagai guru bermarifat benar, beliau menajarkan kaedah meditasi Kuan Yin kepada mereka yang ingin dengan serta-merta menamui sifat Tuhan dalam diri mereka dan dalam masa satu hayat mendapat pembebasan abadi daripada kitaran lahir dan mati. Kaedah Kuan Yin telah diamalkan oleh semua guru pemarifat seperti Buddha, Nabi Isa, Nabi Muhammad, mongka-mongka Tuhan membeli kesejahteraan ke atasnya 
Dan guru Nana beliau menekatkan bahawa jika kita sentiasa ingat akan Tuhan berbakti kepada orang lain dan mematuhi hukum alam semesta, kita akan mencapai potensi tertinggi sebagai manusia benar-benar memahami tujuan kita di bumi. Maha Guru Ching Hai ialah suri delatan belas kasihan sering memberikan bantuan kebendaan dan kewangan serta kasih sayang kepada penarian orang tak berlumah, bangsa bencana alam dan orang lain yang memerlukan bantuan. Pada tahun 2006, beliau menerima hadiah keamanan kusit yang diangkat sebagai hadiah keamanan Nobel Timur dan telah dibeli berhormatan dalam tahun-tahun ini dengan banyak anugerah dan hadiah lain atas kerja amal dan bantuan kemanusiaannya yang menonjol. Sebagai suara sejati bagi rakan haiwan, kita yang menawan Beliau mempromosikan diet keasakan tumbuhan yang damai dan penyayang. Beliau berhasrakan dengan kesedaran manusia tentang kesucian semua hidupan, sebuah dunia weekend yang tenteram dan kemilan di mana haiwan dan orang hidup secara harmoni. Berbagai inisiatif telah diambilnya untuk menyebabkan trans weekend termasuk peralaran bisalah hidup alternatif rantangan restoran weekend antara bangsa Loving Heart, Supreme Master Television serta seling bercakap dengan ketua kerajaan dan media yang berpengalau dan menyertai Persedangan televisyen tentang perubahan iklim Sama ada kita sedang akannya atau tidak Usahanya telah memberikan penggaluh yang besar kepada kesedaran global Tentang kaya hidup mesra haiwan Dan bagaimana cara membelas kasihan ini dapat membawa keamanan yang berpanjangan dalam gerangan negara sementara menyelamatkan planet kita daripada perubahan iklim dalam tahun-tahun ini Maha Guru Ching Hai telah pergi ke seluruh dunia dari negara-negara Amerika ke Afrika dari Eropa ke Oceania dan memberikan beratus-ratus kubah kepada orang ramai dan anak muridnya tentang pembakai topik spiritual. Hari ini, kami berbesar hati untuk mempersembahkan salah satu kupak menalam ini bertajuk Kisah Buddha, seorang pelamin dan tiada api seperti nafsu bahagian tiga ciri berempat. Dalam ruangjangan antara guru dengan anak murid diberikan dalam bahasa Inggeris pada 23 hari bulan September tahun 2015 di Blanchis. So you was thinking how huh, even the Buddha, so powerful figure like a Buddha, so much energy that he could level the level the, the mountains, yeah, and dry up the ocean. Still, this kind of people, karma, so heavy, that the force of karma forced them to do what they did. Imagine one person karma is like that. Imagine many people karma put together. Oh, dear. Yeah. That's why even outside people, they know it. They say, he gives me ulcer, you know. Uh, such and such person give me gas. Uh, such and such a person give me pain in the neck. And sometimes in a you-know-where, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true like that. No, truly. People are not saying that like a joke. It is true. 
you can experience that sometime, don't you? No. Yeah. Maybe sometime it's subtle. You don't experience the pain right away. But gradually it affects you, and then you get sick, seriously sick, and it's too late. Sometimes too late. Yeah. Oh, I have pain in the neck, truly. Oh my God. It happened a lot of time <laughs> when some people special go near, or and sometimes they send uh, some requests toward me silently, or sometimes I think of them or talk about them like right now. Understand me? Even I don't mention the name and not particular person, but <laughs> my subconscious know, and it had really pain here. Oh. Mistake. <laughs> it was a mistake. But it's okay, you know. It's okay. I'm just telling you from my own personal experience. Yeah? It's not a joke. Eh? It's not a joke. That's why in the old time, you know, when people want to marry, you know, or have a partnership in business, or oh, they look high and low from all the astrology, not just the day of birth or the year, but the the hours, the seconds, and the position and the place where they were born. Yeah. Yeah. It's very difficult to find uh, a partner, a friend, a life uh, companion, a lifelong companion, which is compatible to you, harmonious uh, in the relationship, and good energy, and supportive and helpful. Falling in love is easy. Living in love is not. Yeah? <laughs> if, it's, if the love is still there for you to live in, even, <laughs> sometimes it's gone away. <laughs> honeymoon, quick, over. That's why they say honeymoon. In Vietnam, we say honey week. <laughs> week only. After that, it's uh, washing dishes. Is the meal ready? Oh, there's another hair in my soup again. Why did you have such a long hair? <laughs> okay? The house is such a mess. What have you done all day? <laughs> Understand? Did you spend a lot of money buying that dress again? Etc., uh, etc. Et what? Are you watching football again? Are you crazy? <laughs> it's my birthday today. Etc., <laughs> etc. Et mm. <laughs> yeah, very difficult. Huh? Very difficult. <laughs> to find a partner. Yeah. I found one, but I lost it. <laughs> Very funny. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good for you that I lost, right? <laughs> or else, as I'm not sitting here. Yeah? Yeah. I probably still sit somewhere in a coffee shop, hold hands and talk nonsense. Yeah, and laugh. <laughs> laugh at nonsense. So for those of you who have a good marriage, do treasure it, yeah? Do appreciate it. Marriage is not an obstacle to spiritual practice. If you have a good, a harmonious one, okay? You do respect each other and treasure each other company. Till death us do part. And if you have a difficult partner, also it's a challenge for you to be more determined, to be liberated from all this burdensome relationship in this difficult planet, difficult world, okay? Either way, it's all good. <laughs> it's, just, uh, it's just nicer and more pleasant when you both have the same level of spiritual aspiration and supporting each other and loving each other in such a way that is really uh, nourishing for both hmm? in any in many ways. Then you are lucky. Hmm? Okay, hmm. and don't take that for granted. Yeah, uh, a good partner or in marriage or life companion can really help you a lot. You know, when you face outside trouble, you come home, run into each other's arms, or take a coffee together. That is a great comfort. And then go meditate together, you know, supporting each other and, and really encouraging each other and loving each other in that way, then is very good. Many master has life had like life companion. Uh, Krishna, yeah. Um, 
How did you say? Another guy. Oh, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot. Huh? Kabir. What? Kabir. Rama. Rama. Yes. Yeah. Why wow? You know the story. Um, I can't remember. Oh, oh, wow. There's a very big love story. Uh, if I have time, I tell you. Okay. Yeah. Um, who else? Huh? Ah, Prophet Muhammad. Um, Shiva. Hmm. Etc. Huh? Okay. They all have live companion. They are truly like best friends, you know, best friends. They support each other and really just be like in one, né? one person. No conflicting, no argumenting with each other, no contradicting each other, just supporting. Therefore, Kabir, <laughs> he knows you like to be here. <laughs> Remember, you were crying because 11 years you didn't see me. He know. He knows that. So he tell you, good boy. <laughs> and he's also a good boy. <laughs> and there are many also good boy, good girl. He just couldn't reach. Okay? Don't be too uh, hard on yourself. <laughs> just he couldn't reach. Yeah? Because you sit the different way and he cannot run through. If you want uh, any, he reach all of you, then you have to make like way and <laughs> sit on top of each other. Maybe <laughs> easier to reach. <laughs> <laughs> Look at him. See, he mean it. Look at him. He's serious. Yeah, very, very solemn. <laughs> yeah, very dignified dog. Yeah. yeah. Now, <clears throat> if I tell him where he truly comes from, you wouldn't believe me. Well, I keep it a secret. He doesn't want to be told. I also don't want to tell. Uh, yeah, just in the form of the dog, you know? <laughs> or in the form of human, who cares? Nobody knows what's inside, just outside. Everybody would think he's a dog. And because he's not very obedient to them, they throw him out three times. Three families throw him out. They don't know his treasure. They don't know he's a treasure. <laughs> yeah, for, for me, he is a treasure. I know him. He knows me. And we're very comfortable with each other. <laughs> he doesn't always listen to me, huh? It's not like that. But I let him free. Sometimes I, I'm mad at him too because it's raining. <laughs> and I want him to go in in a place, but he, he run away from me because he heard something. He has to go do his job. <laughs> Understand? But uh, I don't like him to get wet. Yeah, and get cold. And cold and wet, what to do? Huh? Yeah, <laughs> but he has to do his job. Yeah, and when he come, he come back. I scold him a lot. I say, "I'm your master. If I told you to come, you come. You understand that, huh?" And then he give me a paw. Sorry, <laughs> he sat in front of me and like this, and and I don't shake his hand and then his foot again. And then he try again and then again and again, and then I relented. Yeah, yeah, he do this kind of thing. You know, I cannot not love him. I don't know who cannot not love him. Yeah, he even he's so beautiful as well. His hair has not grown yet. When it's all grown, he's look very magnificent. Yeah. You know, a lot of mane here like lion. <laughs> yeah, he's so beautiful, huh? Quiet and peaceful. Only when he hears something, then he goes and check. You know, patrolling. Otherwise, he doesn't bug me. Yeah. Yeah, he's so spoiled, you know. We're gonna eat biscuits and bone only. I'm not giving anymore. I told you. No, no, I, I'm not, not doing it. <laughs> I say I'm not doing it. <laughs> I said I'm not doing it. I didn't say I am going to do it. That's a difference. Okay. Okay. So the Buddha continued. Huh? Wow, I sorry I <laughs> went too far. Huh? You still remember the story or not? Yes. yes. You can patch it up, yeah? Okay. Yes. So the Buddha said to Ananda that these living beings for a and a and a and of oh, yeah, since time and memory, you cannot even count or remember, they have never had a chance to see a Buddha. 
to hear a Buddha's teaching, to see his disciple, Shanga, any of his disciples, not just monks, yeah? But at that time, monks are the closest disciple to Buddha, okay? They call it Shanga. Shanga means the members of monkhood. Mm? Mm. So he, they never been able to hear, my God, you thought, huh? You thought it's so easy to see the Buddha, right? We read the story, he's everywhere. <laughs> yeah, in Chetava, Chetavana Park, he's in uh, Sa- Sa- oh, wherever, you know? Many countries, he, he goes everywhere. How come so difficult to see the Buddha? <laughs> yeah, cannot, cannot see the Buddha, all these people. My God. And because of that, the merit is always less, you know? So they had no chance to even do anything to, to go up even, so that to, to see the Buddha at all. The less you see the Buddha, the less you will see. Huh? The more you can see the Buddha, the more you have more chance. It is like that, yeah. So in the Bible, Bible also said that uh, for those you have, you know, be more, be given even that. It means like that, yeah. All right, so. So now the <clears throat> so therefore now they are unable to listen to this dharma mean this teaching dharma means not just a teaching but something deeper something invisible something like during initiation understand the trans transmission the transmission of something that awaken your soul yeah that is a true dharma the Dharma is a Buddha of teaching also, but when the Buddha is not teaching, it's not a true Dharma. When the Buddha just talk, or when somebody re- repeat the Buddha's teaching without power, then it's not a true Dharma. You can call that the Buddha's teaching then. Understand? When the Buddha was talking, even though he used word, but that is also Dharma. Dharma is also mean God, God power, Buddha's nature doesn't only mean uh, the words, uh, speaking by words. It's just that because the, uh, the Buddha was speaking it, so he can also say, this is the Dharma, I'm preaching. Okay? Yes. Yeah, so you must understand this. All right. So now they are unable to listen to this Dharma, which Buddha was teaching. In the route of existence, without conceivable beginning, These living beings have been accustomed to listen to the speech of animals in its countless forms. Therefore, they spend their time in places where men drink and amuse themselves, and therefore sing and dance. It is impossible for them to listen to the Dharma. Anand asks again, But Reverend, Sir, meaning the word honor one, the Tathagata. For what reason is it that they are unable to listen to the Dharma? Why are you crying, Korean? Huh? Sir, I, I feel we are the luckiest children. Oh, okay. And for that you keep crying all the time? <laughs> so you don't hear my teaching? <laughs> no. <laughs> what, what have you been born 500 years before? <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's <so>, okay. <laughs> for what? <laughs> for laughing at, at your expense? <laughs> it's okay, I know you are very sincere, but you are a crying baby. Ever since I saw you here, never one time you don't cry. <laughs> In the beginning you cry a lot, and then uh, you stop for a while, you know, I mean, <laughs> I mean, maybe I didn't see when you were crying, and now you're crying again. <laughs> Okay, it's okay. If you want to cry, it's good. At least it's good for your eyes. It cleans your eyes. <laughs> You've been cooking all day. Smoke gets into your eyes now. <laughs> and the soya smell gets <laughs> into your eyes. <clears throat> I know you're very sincere, and I'm very happy to have some students like you. Mm. You're welcome. <laughs> I really want to cry also. <laughs> Okay, try to listen to the Dharma, okay? You've been crying 500 years already. (laughs) Okay, 
So just just to test, what did I say just now? <laughs> huh? What did I say? <laughs> so you, <laughs> you keep digging into your tears. <laughs> All right. Don't cry too much. Your your eyes may get dry and swollen. Afterward, you have to go and get some eye drop. Okay. Mm, otherwise, it might get hurt. Yeah. Uh, wow, my God. So the Buddha, the Buddha said like that, and Ananda still asks, but what is the reason? <laughs> what else <laughs> the reason? Huh? So the teacher, meaning the Buddha, answer him as follows. Ananda, they are unable to do so by reason. Can, can everybody hear me? Yes. I forgot to move this. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Ananda, they are unable to do so by reason of lust. Lust, hmm? uh, desirous, physical desire. By reason of hatred, by reason of delusion. For there is no fire like the fire of lust, consuming living beings as it does, without leaving, without leaving so much as ashes behind. Whew, what kind of fire that burn and even destroy the ashes as well. There's no visible evidence of the burning lust, right? Therefore, he say, even no, leaving no, no ashes behind. This is a troublesome disease that transmits from one to another person, from one generation to the next. Very difficult to escape. Therefore, people revere the monks, you know? Either during Jesus' uh, prophet's time or Buddha's time, or now even. Eh? Even some monks still eat meat and drink wine, but they forsake the sensual pleasure, and people revere them, because it's a difficult thing to do. That is why. Yeah? They do something that the majority of people cannot do, you know? They leave the family. They leave the um, <clears throat> ensnaring clutch of lust, lustful relationship behind, which is not their fault or it's not your fault. It is a, the, 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 the makeup, the foundation of physical beings is like that. It's made up like that. It's made you have all kind of desire inside your body. The, the cells, the hormones, driving everybody crazy. That is why it's so difficult to leave it behind. And so the monks and the nuns who could leave it, they revere them because of that. That doesn't mean that monks and nuns had no feeling. They just try to conquer it, understand? Or try to ignore it, or, or do something else which make themselves more, make their life more busy, more meaningful. You understand? Than just to take care of your physical demand or desire of the sensual pleasure, or and then uh, have to take care of the consequence thereof afterward. You know, like me, a large family, and working so hard day in day out just to survive, just to keep the family afloat. Mm. Not every fortunate to have a lot of money to keep the family. But even then, to have a lot of money, meaning a lot of responsibility too, they have to take care of the business, they have to work also, very hard. Hmm? Hmm. All right, so the Buddha say that one of few reasons is lust, hatred, or delusion, okay? So the lust, the fire of lust is burning living beings without living traces ashes behind, yeah. To be sure, the word conflagration, conflagration, which closes an epoch, burns up the world, the world without leaving anything behind. But this is a fire which breaks out only on the appearance of the seven suns, and this fire burns only at times and at seasons. But as for the fire of lust, there is no time when the fire of lust does not burn. Understand? There's some time in some special epoch, epoch, the fire from the sun burns, or maybe the climate change burns, burn everything. 
you know, destroy the one of the planet or destroy the whole planet or destroy most of the planet, living beings or uh, others, uh, uh, you know, existence on one planet. Even or if the sun, when too many sun come out, like seven suns, like some of the period of the time when when it's the end of the world is approaching, maybe seven suns appear, or maybe just a symbol of the seven sun because it's too hot. Normal sun is bearable, but if it's but it's hotter than this, seven times hotter, then it's like seven suns appear in the sky. But this kind of disaster or dis- destruction only burns sometimes in the period of existence, not every day, not all the time. But the fire of of lust, according to Buddha observation, it burns all the time. He said, there is no time when the fire of lust does not burn. It don't burn here, it don't burn there, but it burns within all beings inside. Therefore, there are wars, there are trouble, there are fighting, there are, you know, murder, there are all kinds of things because of lust. Lust not mean only sexual desire. It could also mean lust for power, for fame, you know, for victory over others, for fortune, understand, for controlling. All this kind of lust is burning people, burning all beings inside out. And lust for vengeance also, né? revenge, lust for, how you say, greed, all kind of lust, né? okay? <clears throat> therefore, I say, the Buddha, therefore I say that there is no fire like the fire of lust, no grip, grip like hatred, no snare like delusion, and no river like craving. So saying, the teacher pronounced the following stanza in the Buddha. He summoned, you know, he summarized <laughs> the whole meaning of his teaching. There is no fire like lust, no captor like aversion. Unequaled is delusion's net, no river like craving. And he just summarized what he has told before. That's it. End the story. Thank you to the Buddha again to clarify all this and to remind us to practice, to concentrate, one pointed, at least here. Okay? You should know in the night time, if you really try to be awake, you will hear better sound. You see better vision. Yeah, it happened to me before, you know, the beginning, <laughs> when I still didn't know anything, you know, well, I don't sleep, I just sit in the corner. Uh, I didn't have much money. If I go visit somewhere, I just bring a coat with me, you know, and then I cover, I sit in the corner of their house and cover with my coat, the outside coat, long and big, like a bathrobe, see so long and big. And I just sit, and in, 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 sometimes I go to Inisha's house, you know, some people, same, same, same method. And I ask him, uh, your neighbor is playing, you know, music all night. And he said, no, we don't have any neighbor four miles away. <laughs> we own the whole forest mm-hmm. and the lake, uh, no neighbors. But I heard all kind of music all night, yeah, beautiful. So they were very envious of me. Say, what? We didn't hear anything. <laughs> I sat next to their bed, you know. I hear nothing. <laughs> yeah, that's what I call deaf. Deaf. Huh? Deaf. Really deaf is like that. <laughs> not the people who couldn't hear, but the people who could not hear. <laughs> Understand? <laughs> that is really deaf. I have a physical body, and my physical body reacts to bright lights, to sensitive, you know, to things. Yeah. In fact, I have to confess to you, I don't know how I keep doing this. 
you know, knowing myself, <laughs> what I like and what I don't like, you know. And I don't know how I could do it. <laughs> yeah, the body uh, has some different reaction to different things. Yeah, yeah. You tough, you strong. And uh, not everybody is tough and strong. I am not that tough, not that strong. I'm more sensitive in different ways. That's all, okay? But just like maybe some people go in a dark forest, they don't have fear. I do. I do have fear. But I still do it. You understand? Yeah. It's not because uh, if I give you something, it doesn't mean I don't like it. <laughs> I throw it away. So I also like my privacy. I like to be alone very much. I like just to be completely alone. But I give you this as a gift to be with you. Understand? It doesn't mean that I like. I don't like to be alone. Yeah. It's just like that. And I fear, but I go into the forest because I want to go. I must go there for a special reason. Meditate in some special place. Yeah? I cannot tell lie. I cannot say, oh, whoa. I fear nothing. <laughs> I do fear. Uh, in Himalaya, I also have fear. Huh? Yeah. Because sometimes I walk in the dark to go home. I, I don't remember now how I did it. I don't have any flashlight. I couldn't afford it at that time. Battery, you know, and heavy, you know, I can't carry everything. But I always find a way home, even in a dark forest. I have to go through dark forest to go home. I didn't know how I do that. <laughs> but I did. Sometimes cross the river and all that, you know, and the river swollen very quick and I had to run fast and uh, fell in down, falling down, something like that. But I just did it. Not because I don't have fear. Not because I'm a tough girl, but I do it. Just do it. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> so some people expect that I have no fear, no sadness. And yeah, and my body is made of iron, like the Buddha. There, no, 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 no delusion, no lie. Okay? I'm fragile, sensitive. Hmm? Love to be alone. <laughs> love quietness. I love safety. <laughs> Small woman, no? Yeah. There are big guys around everywhere, hunters, <laughs> animals. Eh? Yeah. Animals, I don't fear much. I fear human more. <laughs> okay, so now you understood everything? Yeah? Mm, I hope you still like me after you know that I have fear and <laughs> sensitive. <Yeah. laughs> huh? Picky, picky, huh? Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I just don't tell lie, that's all. <laughs> yeah? What's the use? What's the use of telling you I'm a tough girl, tough guy? What's the use of that? For what reason I should cheat you? Huh? For what reason I should tell you that? When it doesn't exist? For what? Mm. Okay then. Okay, huh? We're done today. Penuntun yang menawa anda telah menyaksikan kisah Buddha seorang pelamin dan tiada api seperti nafsu bahagian tiga siri berempat dalam rancangan antara guru dengan anak murid seterusnya ialah daripada teks suci karya mencis Kong Sun Chou satu bahagian satu siri berdua. Dalam rancangan kata-kata bijaksana, semoga hidup anda penuh dengan kebahagiaan dan kemurahan. Untuk maklumat lanjut, sila kunjungi 
www.supremastertv.com/bmd